In the shadow of Maryland's capital city, Wes Adams serves as a law and order prosecutor, trying to head off the opioid crisis one school child at a time. We had 924 overdoses with 125 people who died. To Adams, this is personal. His brother-in-law, Nick, abused prescription medicine until it led to heroin, which killed him earlier this year. For a long time, he did a good job hiding it from us. Unless we change culturally how we look at this, it could be you tomorrow, it could be me, it could be really anybody. So when Adams underwent spinal fusion surgery last year, he was stunned when 90 pills of opioid pain medicine came only with this warning. The only thing you're going to tell me is that it causes constipation. How about, you know, maybe it's addicting. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found health care providers wrote 259 million prescriptions for opioid pain medication in 2012, adding enough for every adult in the United States to have a bottle of pills. A recent article in a Johns Hopkins University publication found that a bottle of Oxycontin no more heals an aching back than a lollipop heals a skin knee. And data suggests that four out of five people who started heroin use began with a prescription opioid. We were always told that we weren't giving people enough pain medicine, that we missed the fifth vital sign, that, that we're, we weren't kind enough to them, and we were encouraged to give them medicine. For years, orthopedic surgeon Edward McDevitt has limited the number of narcotics prescribed to his patients. He lost two brothers to addiction. I think doctors finally realized that we're part of the problem, and they were giving the medicine too many pills to too many patients. But critics say there are not enough physicians with that attitude, and they point to continuing medical education requirements, or CMEs, which are tied to licensing, as one of the reasons why. One of those critics, Dr. Ingvild Olson with the American Society of Addiction Medicine. Her grade for continuing education? At this point, I would say that we've probably moved from an F to a D, maybe a D plus. This may be why. An I-team analysis in March found at least 32 states and nearby D.C. don't have any mandatory CMEs related to controlled substances or pain management. The Maryland Board of Physicians had mandated a one-hour course on opioid prescribing, but the legislature removed that last year. And they have to want to do it and really understand that they do have a role, um, a very important role in helping to address the epidemic. Yeah. More medical schools, like Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, are requiring pain management and substance abuse courses. Maggie Sundell is a student in her second it's, year. It's still new to have pain in the curriculum for medical students, and, and that just blows my mind. Pain is the most common reason that people see a doctor. While some are looking to the next generation of doctors to get this right, Others believe there is no time to waste. The doctors, we should be the ones in, in, in charge and saying, we're going to stop this in our country. We have to be the ones that are out there in front and say, we're not going to do this. The consequences don't care about a color or creed. They don't care about a, a, a socioeconomic status. What they care about is getting a hold of somebody and destroying them. Adams says it is never too early to start this conversation, but he knows firsthand when it can be too late. A sea change is underway in the medical community. Consider this, it has only been two years since addiction medicine was considered a recognized specialty, despite the millions of people who so desperately need expert help. Stan? Very eye-opening, Deb, thank you. And you can follow all of our coverage and the efforts to combat the opioid epidemic by going to the WBAL-TV mobile app and tapping on State of Addiction.